So before I get into this video, I want to give a massive shout out for the overwhelming support on the channel and a specific shout out to one of my best Fortnite videos, 100 Lies Players in Fortnite Say. Now this video is going to be a great video. It's very informative and very entertaining in my opinion. So be sure to obviously stick around and watch this video. I really think it's going to help you out. But I just wanted to say that I am hosting a V-Bucks giveaway on the channel and uh, it blew up a little bit. And the reason I'm specifically shouting out is because it's nearly my first ever video that I've uploaded onto YouTube that's going to reach 1 million views. And I said that I'd give away one like for one V-Buck. And all you have to do to enter this giveaway, it's still on. All you have to do is subscribe to the channel down below. Should be sure to click that if you haven't already. And click like on this video to increase the amount of likes, uh, the amount of V-Bucks that I'm giving away. And uh, it's nearly at 60,000, as you can see. And a lot of people are saying, like, in the comments, saying, like, it's fake. Like, look at that. I wish YouTubers didn't lie about giveaways. There is no giveaway. It's a lie. It's not a lie. It's just I said specifically in the video, unlike a lot of shady giveaways, I said an end date. I said however many likes this video gets within a month or within a month of me posting it. So on the 23rd of March, I'm going to take the number of likes and buy that many V-Bucks either for one person or a few people split up. I haven't yet thought of it. So this V-Bucks giveaway is still happening. I hope you do enjoy and thanks as always for the support on the channel. Hello there guys and girls, this is Pixel and it is time, it is another weekly challenge and yes, one of them once again is a Search 7 Chest Challenge and as we found out by the Wailing Woods Challenge, that can bring a lot of people and a lot of attention to particular places on the map. This week's point of interest is, if you don't already know, Junk Junction. Now, from the start, off the bat, you can see it's looking a little bit better than, um, than Wailing Woods because there's more chests available. And uh, basically, the, the thing we're going to be discussing in this video today is one, what counts as Junk Junction and what doesn't count as Junk Junction, and then two, as a result of that, the best methods to land and complete the challenge quickly, because I have actually completed the Junk Junction chest challenge within 40 minutes, and that was from dropping the first time to testing different locations and stuff and finding out the best way. It took me less than an hour to do the Junk Junction challenge, whereas it took me many hours to do the Wailing Woods challenge. Now, first of all, the thing you're going to want to do is spawn in the game in a solo squad. Now, I initially tried the Wailing Woods challenge as my first sort of sweat challenge attempt. I tried to do it in solos, and I haven't actually tried the Junk Junction challenge in solos because I assume a lot of people are going to be going in and trying it. So that's not what you're going to want to do. You're going to want to go to solo squad. There's some people saying that you could do like the, the five teams of 20 game mode, but I don't even know if it works in that mode. It may or may not do, but this is honestly so quick. I wouldn't even consider doing it in the other way. So if we zoom into Junk Junction in the corner of that map, there are 16 chests that are either in Junk Junction or surround it. Now you may be thinking, why are you talking about these chests? But they definitely need to be considered because in the Wailing Woods challenge, you look at all these all these chests in the maze that count, uh, this chest actually counted for the Wailing Woods challenge if done correctly, but the chest here did not. So we definitely do need to consider all possibilities for this challenge. Now, where's the main focal point of all the fights going to be for this challenge? It's going to be in the middle of Junk Junction. Now that I think about it, this chest map is outdated. It has certainly been changed because I found a chest in Junk Junction that's not actually on this map. I found a chest where I believe to be right there and I'm pretty sure there was also a chest here too. So this chest map is just a guide. There are chests that are in Junk Junction that aren't on this map. But what counts as Junk Junction? I wanted to go above and beyond so I tested out all the closest chests. I tested out these two which are in the big llama statue similar to the chest in the fox statue in the Wailing Woods scenario. I tested out each of these three chests. The one in the truck there, the one in the shack there and the one in the house there and I tested out this chest here and this chest here because I figured if these two chests don't have don't count towards the challenge then these ones aren't going to either because one they're in the same settlement and two they're further away from the destination now there's two ways that you could go about doing this challenge because there is a way that I did the Wailing Woods challenge that can really apply to Junk Junction here and that is to aim for the middle every single time you land. So that doesn't mean actually land in the middle of Junk Junction, but aim for it. Because then if you realize that you are the lowest, it can be pretty easy for you to just hop off onto a nearby car or into a building and get a couple of chests quickly before everyone else. So if you aim for the middle, your chances for chests are higher because there's many potential chests in Junk Junction. But then if you look around and see that there's more people with you or there's a lot of people or some are lower than you, you can always bail off. However, the way I did it and the way I'd actually recommend you do it, because this is like 
like, it's almost like a secret chess box, kind of because I think of the Wailing Woods challenge last week. Now, like I said earlier, the llama and the fox were a part of a week one challenge. So some people have given the llama the same attention that they gave the fox. They figured, okay, the chest in the fox didn't count towards the Wailing Woods challenge. So why would the chest in the llama, which are pretty far away, count in the junk junction challenge? Well, it turns out they actually do count. Rather than going straight to the middle to the chaos that was the Junk Junction challenge, I decided to start off by going to the surrounding areas to see which chests worked, to see if I could actually complete the challenge without ever going into the center. And with this method, I actually managed to get three chests in one game. So I'll explain that right now. So like I said, it is possible for these two chests in the llama to count towards the Junk Junction challenge. But then of course, I had to go and get them again and try out to see if you had to be in a particular position. Because when I first went for the chests, I went as far south as possible to grab them in order to be close enough to Junk Junction for it to count, like you have to do with the shack in the Wailing Woods challenge. So then I went back in to Fortnite and went as far north, as far away from Junk Junction to get these chests, and it all counted. So unlike the Wailing Woods one where you had to be in a particular position for the chest, any time you get a chest from the llama, it counts towards the Junk Junction challenge. And the best part is, similar to the shack in the Wailing Woods challenge, nobody contested me for it once. I guess because, like I said, in the, the chest in the fox didn't count towards the Wailing Wood challenge. Nobody came to the llama with me. Not once. And I got six chests straight away, back to back, in three back to back games, I'm pretty sure. Not including one game in the middle where I went to these two places. And they, they counted towards my challenge. Now, I didn't have much hope for this place, but I thought after I landed here, I'd check it out just to make sure. But uh, this chest is one that really intrigued me because it's literally on the word Junk Junction. So you think... Maybe that'll count, and it's it's as close to this corner here as the llama is. So in terms of distance, this one could be a real potential chest. And um, I didn't go as close to Junk Junction to open it, I will admit, but I hopped in the truck and opened the chest, and it didn't count. This chest here didn't count, and this chest here didn't count. Once I cleared up that area, I went further south to this complex and opened up these two chests, and similarly, they didn't count either. So the only chests that count towards this challenge are the ones in the middle, and the ones on the llama. So your best bet at getting chests for this challenge are going towards the llama, but how did I manage to get three chests in one challenge? Well, that is where this secret hidden chest comes in, a chest that's not on the map that I believe to be here. And like I said, there was also one here on this part. What I did, I used the weapons that I got in the chest on the llama to take out the people that had gone for these chests in the building because the main attraction in Junk Junction is this building here for these chests. So there were two people lurking around this building, looking around that hadn't found the chest here yet. So I was able to use the rifle and another weapon. I can't remember which one it was, but I'll play the clip on the screen to take out, I think it was just both rifle actually. I used both rifle kills to take out everyone left in Junk Junction and get the chest that was left over. And that was my seventh chest. I got six from the llama and one from inside Junk Junction. So yes, I did say you should like aim for Junk Junction to see if you're the lowest and just try and cash in on those chests. But honestly, unlike the Wailing Woods challenge, your best bet is to just skirt off to the side, go to the llama and get those two chests. Because like I said, not once was I contested. No one even went near the llama. No one looked at the llama. Everyone went straight for Junk Junction. One person went here with me to try and get the chest. I killed him and searched that. And one person went here with me. I killed him and searched that chest. But nobody, for some reason, I guess because the Fox and the Wailing Woods thing, is going for the llama chest. Like the seven chest challenge have been known to be quite hard, particularly because of Wailing Woods, but the fact that I got three chests in one game really shows, you know, and it wasn't just lucky spawns like the llama, the two were great, yes, but had I not killed those two people, that chest probably would have been snapped up, so... That's a pretty cool start as far as I'm concerned. But hey, compared to the four plus hours it took me to try all the different Wailing Woods locations and figure out the best way to get the challenge done, 40 minutes on this challenge is definitely very impressive. And that was to try out every possible chest as well. Not just a few, every single one. Challenges, boom. Okay, we've done half of the harvesting challenge. Deal damage with suppressed weapons to opponents, that's what we've got to do. We've got all these to do, that shouldn't be too hard. That shouldn't be too hard. There's only one elimination that you have to do there. I thought it was two when I saw the leaked picture. Follow the treasure map. That'll be fun. Different bullseyes. That's easy. Suppressed weapons probably will be one of the harder ones. Although, does crossbow count as suppressed? Because it is completely silent. Maybe you can kill two birds with one stone there. But either way, we've done searching the chests in Junk Junction. That is it. So... That is the best way 
to do the challenge. So that is it for my tutorial on how best to complete the Junk Junction challenge. I've officially done that. So now I'm going to go try and find the map in Snobby Shores, do the elimination of the Salty Springs, the Bullseye Landing, which is super easy, by the way. They just flash up on the on the map. There's a Bullseye there. There's a Bullseye uh, on, on top of the hill either there or there. There's a Bullseye there. There's Bullseyes everywhere. You'll find that pretty easy. So we're going to have another challenge soon. But that is the Junk Junction video. If you did enjoy and want to see more challenges, tutorials, and Fortnite videos, then be sure to leave a like on it. Subscribe today to join the Pixel Army. I've been Pixel. You have been awesome. And I'll see you in the next video very soon.